Shakespeare was an English playwright, poet and actor who is widely regarded as one of the world's best writers and theatrical producers, with his large catalogue of plays still being performed across the world today. He was such an inspiring figure that he even holds influence on us today, nearly 400 years after his death, with a large amount of the words and phrases we use today being of his creation. Phrases such as vanish into thin air, wild goose chase, break the ice and many many more. Christened in 1564, Shakespeare, sometimes known as the Bard of Avon due to his status as England's national poet, wrote a staggering 39 plays, 154 sonnets, as well as a large collection of other works and verses, and is famous for writing some of the best tragedies and comedies ever seen, such as Hamlet, Romeo and Juliet, and Macbeth, and even enjoyed widespread popularity in his own lifetime, up until his death in 1616. Shakespeare's plays are still being adapted for modern audiences as well as still being performed in the theatre. But did you know that Shakespeare never actually published any of his own plays and that we only have his plays today thanks to his friends recording and releasing them seven years after his death? Or that Shakespeare only began writing sonnets because of an outbreak of the Black Plague caused all the theatres to shut meaning he couldn't perform any of his new plays. All that some people think Shakespeare didn't exist or was a fraud, citing the unlikeliness that someone from Shakespeare's background who had never really ventured outside his city of birth or studied playwriting became one of the most influential and prolific writers in history. Well, make sure to watch until the end because this short seven minute documentary will cover all and more. And if you like this video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are any other topics you would like to see me cover. William Shakespeare was born in 1564 to Mary Aidan and John Shakespeare in the English town of Stratford-upon-Avon. He was the third of eight children, however his two older sisters died when they were infants, making him the eldest. His father John was a moderately successful glove maker and Mary was the daughter of an affluent landowning family. Although Shakespeare's actual birth date is unknown, we do have the record of the date he was baptised in 1564. And here is a picture of the house Shakespeare was born in. And it's a picture I took because I've been there. It's generally believed that Shakespeare attended the local free school in Stratford but never received any further formal education. There aren't many records of Shakespeare's early life but we do know that at the age of 18 he married Anne Hathaway, a woman eight years in his senior. Not that Anne Hathaway, this Anne Hathaway, who was born into a family of farmers. Hathaway was already three months pregnant at the time of the marriage with their first child, a daughter named Susanna, born in 1583. Halfway then gave birth to twins two years later with a son, Hamnet, believed to be an inspiration for Hamlet, and daughter Judith. Their only son, Hamnet, died of unknown causes at the age of 11, believed to be the plague. From then, there is little records as to what Shakespeare did up until his emergence in the London theatre scene in 1592, although there is speculation that he worked for a bit as a school teacher. Although it is not known when Shakespeare first began writing plays, we do know that several of his plays were performed in stages in London by 1592. We know this because he drew criticism from his contemporaries, with the playwright Robert Greene attacking him in print, calling him an upstart crow. It is believed Greene disliked Shakespeare for reaching above his station and trying to match the university-educated writers such as Christopher Marlowe. It is clear from the way Green was referring to Shakespeare that he had been on the London theatre scene for some time by then. A year later, Shakespeare's first printed poem was released, Venus and Adonis, and a year after, his first printed play was released, Titus Adronicus. However, this was not his first play. The chronology of Shakespeare's work is actually a big point of contention among scholars, with it generally being accepted that Shakespeare's work can be separated into three categories. Tragedies, comedies and histories. Some believe that he began writing histories such as Henry IV Part One, early in his career in an attempt to compete with his contemporaries at the time, then moved on to tragedies and comedies. However, there is little evidence of this, with many accepting his earliest play was probably The Two Gentlemen of Verona, a comedy believed to be written between 1589 and 1593. The play is woven with the themes that would later become the basis for many of his later works, and is also considered his weakest play. Most of Shakespeare's best and well-known works came later in his career, such as Hamlet, Macbeth, Othello, A Midsummer's Night Dream, and Romeo and Juliet. Shakespeare was not only a successful writer, but acted in many of the plays he produced, leading his acting company, The Lord Chamberlain's Men, and was also a pretty able businessman, reinvesting the profits made from his plays to build his own theatre in which to perform, The Globe. Built in 1599, the Globe Theatre was positioned near Southwark Bridge Road in London, 
and was designed as an amphitheatre, with the actors able to walk among and interact with the audience. A modern reconstruction of the globe stands near the original location today, where there are productions being shown to this day. I'd recommend visiting. What I find to be the more interesting parts of Shakespeare's works, from a historical perspective, is his relationships with the monarchs of the day. Shakespeare saw two monarchs of England being born under the rule of Queen Elizabeth I and dying under the reign of King James I. And interestingly, there was very few references to the crown at the time. This was a time when you could be accused of treason and beheaded at the whim of the crown. So it was important to placate the monarch, even more so because the monarchy was a big benefactor to theatre at the time. It's believed that Shakespeare's works used female leads so often as a way to impress the Queen, and also as a thank you for her continued support. His relationship with Elizabeth's successor proved even better, with his acting troupe officially being adopted by the King, changing their name from Lord Chamberlain's men to the King's men and welcoming the new King with a new play, Macbeth. While he was winding down his career, an outbreak of the bubonic plague struck London in 1609, causing all theatres to be shut in order to stem the spread, meaning there was no acting work. It's believed that during this time Shakespeare wrote and published the majority of his sonnets, as despite him moving into retirement during this period, it was not the norm at the time for someone to completely stop working. As he grew older, Shakespeare wrote fewer and fewer plays, with no plays linked to him after 1613. This might have something to do with the Globe Theatre burning down during a performance of Henry VIII in the same year, when a theatrical cannon misfired and ignited the thatch roof. It wasn't long after this that Shakespeare died in 1616, at the age of 52, which drew mournful words from his contemporary playwrights at the time, a stark contrast to how they treated him before. How he actually died is unknown, as he was described as being in perfect health just a month before when signing his will. He was survived by his wife, Anne Hathaway, and two daughters, and was buried in the Holy Trinity Church in Stratford, with an epitaph carved into the stone slab covering his grave promising to curse anyone who tried to move his bones. His bones haven't moved since, and Shakespeare remains one of the most famous playwrights and poets ever, with monuments, statues and memorials commemorating him around the world. We only know so much of Shakespeare's work because two of his friends wrote and published the majority of his plays around seven years after his death, in a volume called Shakespeare's First Folio. It is thanks to his friends that we are able to study, adapt and perform Shakespeare's wide works today as the majority of his works were never published in his lifetime. However, there are still some works that have been lost to time, like Cardenio and the supposed sequel to Love's Labour's Lost, Love's Labour's Won. Shakespeare's work is so great and impressive that it even drew conspiracy theorists to argue that he didn't write the majority of the plays we attribute to him, and even that he didn't exist. Some have even put forward other candidates of whom he might have stolen work from, such as Christopher Marlowe or Francis Bacon. There is merit to the idea, as he lived over 400 years ago, the records we have of his life are few and far in between. And it is remarkable that a man of such humble origins, little education and an obscure background could go on to create pieces of work that would go on to be considered some of the greatest works of all time. But with little evidence backing it up, and with all fingers pointing to a humble man from Stratford going on to become the greatest writer of all time, it's clear that Shakespeare was simply remarkable. And there you have it, your 7 minutes in history video on the life of Shakespeare. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel where I'll be making more content like this. I really appreciate you watching and look forward to seeing you again next time.